Hello and welcome to News Click. I'm Paranjoy Guha Thakurta and we're going to discuss an issue or a series of issues that are roiling the country. The credibility of the election process. We're going to talk about electronic voting machines, how they're stored, how they're transported, how they're kept. And we're going to also talk about VVPATs or the Voter Verified Paper Audit Trail Machines to discuss this issue, I have with me here in the studio, Professor Rahul Roy of the Indian Statistical Institute, who also happens to be a fellow of the Indian Academy of Sciences. And with us here is Probir Purukaisto, who is not just the editor of NewsClick, but also the president of the Free Software Movement of India. Rahul, what we see is, first, we have a former chief election commissioner urging the election commission, why aren't you clarifying? Speed is extremely important. This is Dr. S.Y. Qureshi. Then the election commission says, no, no, everything is ordered, no problems, everything is fine. And, and all the reports, all the videos that are doing the rounds of the social media from Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Punjab, Haryana, Arunachal Pradesh, all over, that don't worry, everything is all right, everything has been checked. This is pertaining to pictures, videos showing EVMs being transported in private vehicles and so on and so forth. And even as we are recording this discussion, representatives of 21 opposition parties are meeting the members of the Election Commission to express various concerns they have about the VP Pats. Okay, so now tell me, one key issue is what if there is a discrepancy found between the numbers in the electronic voting machine and that in the VVPAT. We are not clear what the Election Commission will do under the circumstances. Political parties, including the Communist Party of India, Marxist, uh, General Secretary Sita Ram Yachuri has said you should then have all the VVPATs in that entire Lok Sabha constituencies checked. Is that feasible? Well, I think it's feasible because before the EVMs, if you remember, the, ele the election counting on ballot paper was actually done in three days. And the uh, election commission nowadays is telling us that it will take five days or a week. I mean, I, I don't think it's, it's actually realistic. So election commission, I would think, is just exaggerating the number of days. On However, the 8th of April, that's what the election commission claimed, that the results would be delayed by f five days. If 50% of all the VVPAT machines were matched with the EVMs. And this is 50% of all VVPAT machines in every assembly segment. Well, first of all, so be it if, if it, if that is what's required to actually ensure the fidelity of the elections. However, we don't think, uh, so if you, one can do a real statistical analysis. I mean, one thing which uh, it's easy to understand is that, so if the winning candidate and the, per, and the candidate who comes number two, you know, if the difference is, let's say, one and a half lakhs, and a typical uh, size of a constituency is around 10 lakhs in India of people who vote. Uh, well, 10 lakhs who are eligible to vote, but in less than that vote. And so if the difference is uh, one and a half lakh, let's say, then, you know, to change the result, you'll have to actually tamper at least 75,000 votes. Because, you know, if 75,000 votes were, were uh, placed, uh, put for you by tampering, then if you remove it, would, that, it means the corresponding loss to exactly, your political opponents. Exactly. So, so in a, in a one and a half lakh, in let's say out of a, a place where eight lakh voted, if the difference is one and a half lakh, then just to ensure, you know, that the voting has been done correctly, the counting has been done correctly, we need to sample a few, not so many. However, if the difference is just fifteen thousand. The difference between a winning candidate and the second candidate is just 15,000, then just 7,500 7, votes yeah. would make a big difference. Okay. You made your point. Earlier in the day, the Supreme Court, the vacation bench headed by Justice Arun Mishra, dismissed yet another petition saying this matter has already been decided by the Chief Justice of India, bench headed by the Chief Justice of India. And he said, Why are you coming again and again? This petition is nonsense. Democracy will suffer. So, the Supreme Court has stuck to its position that the Election Commission will have to verify 
not one, but five randomly chosen polling booths, the VVBAD matching them with the EVMs for each assembly segment. Is this adequate? And you still haven't answered the question. What if there's a discrepancy? Let me take, take that up if there's a discrepancy, because I don't think that's a scientific or a mathematical question. So I think the best answer to that was what was given by uh, Qureshi Saab. He actually said in such a case, all the votes in that constituency should be counted manually, which means that the VVPAT slip should be counted. The important point is, till date, the Election Commission has not laid, laid down any procedure if there is a discrepancy, and that's a gap in the Election Commission's procedure itself, which it needs to address. In fact, that's been pointed out by a number of people, and the Election Commission's defense is, wherever it has been counted, they have claimed that there was no discrepancy, which is very hard to believe because, you know, human error would be there even if the EVM error is not there. So this seems to so, be... So you, you think that is the key issue, that there should be a laid down procedure if there is a discrepancy? If there is a discrepancy, there should be a procedure. And I believe in the absence of a procedure, what Rahul said was absolutely right, that all the votes should be counted in that case manually because in that constituency, clearly, if you are saying EVM is always 100% correct, a discrepancy will show that there is a problem and therefore it needs to be counted. And it doesn't matter whether the, the, the announcement of the results get delayed. Of course, Absolutely. of course. I think the sanctity of the election process has two parts to it. One is to find out who has really won. Other is to convince both the losing candidates and the electorate that a just election has taken place and therefore the credibility of the election demands in such a scenario that you count all okay. the votes. Now, let me get back to that question. Instead of one VVPAT being matched with the EVM per assembly segment, one polling booth, mm -hmm. now the Supreme Court has said five. The 21 opposition parties had been asking for 50%. Finally, they were willing to settle for half, for 25%. But now it is five VVPATs to be matched with the EVMs in one there assembly really segment no, in really each no, assembly segment. Right, but there is really no scientific basis to have to, have, to having a number one or five or twenty five percent or fifty percent. You know, that's the 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 thing which is if you if you want to really do a statistical analysis, then it has to depend on the difference between the winning candidate and the person who's coming number two, because that is that will tell you how many votes are required to change the results completely. But can this kind of micromanagement be possible in an election of the scale that we've just had, when you're talking about 543 Lok Sabha constituencies? Indeed. I mean, you, you can just write a small little program saying that if the difference is 490,000, then this should be than total number of samples which are to be selected at random. So, so you are saying depending on the winning or stroke losing margin accordingly a certain number of VV paths should be matched with the EVM. Right. Of course. But we always, you know, there's all in statistics there's always to what degree of accuracy you want. If you want 100% accuracy then you'll have to count everything. If you are willing to accept some error then you'll have to count less. If you're, of course, if you're willing to accept more error, then you have to count even less. Probably, do you think it's feasible? No, the feasibility of it doesn't matter because at the end of it, the sanctity of the elections far outweigh mm -hmm. the question of feasibility. I don't think that should be even brought into the question. The question really is why should we do this? And we have already answered that question because the election is finally the test of Indian democracy. That's the way. We have what I would call an electoral democracy. A true democracy is something that we have yet to achieve. That's something we have to fight for is a different issue. And also, if you remember, before the EV EVMs came into the picture, if the difference was less than a certain amount, then it was recounted. And it's automatically, automatically recounted. Automatically I mean, recounted. that means the, the, the losing candidate wouldn't actually have to file an application, application or apply right. for a recount. It would Indeed. automatically Indeed. be done whenever the contest was closed. So, but now we don't know what is the procedure. If the difference, if the difference is less, 
are the VVPAT going to be counted or do you again plug in the machines and, and put in a Microsoft answer? This is a very answer. important point Rahul is raising because till the ballot, ballot paper, our understanding was the ballot paper is what would be called the ballot. Okay. With the EVM, there was no paper for the so initial what is, phase. What is the ballot? The ballot became there for the electronic recording in the EVM, which is of course not tangible. Now that VVPAT is available for all the uh, machines, all the EVMs, the VVPAT is available, we'll have to consider the EVM as a printing and accounting machine and the ballot as a printing paper. This is legally how I think if you look at both the quote unquote counts and what is available, I think this is the only sensible way to define what is a ballot and what is the role of the EVM. And I will say again, repeat, EVM now is a counting come printing machine. It's no longer the ballot that is there All in right. the EVM. But, but Therefore, the demand that the paper ballot be counted, I think is a legitimate one, which the parties are making. And I think the election commission is erring by standing on its prestige and not declaring a procedure, as Rahul is saying. If this, then this is the difference, we'll do this. This is the legal position that we see of now, instead of which they are really saying, we believe the VVPAT we are doing under duress, we don't really want it, and EVM is enough, and all this thing is really for show and satisfying some disgruntled people. I think election commission needs to take a statesman-like view of the scenario. You're saying it is, is it's standing on too high a moral ground. I wouldn't call it a you moral wouldn't call ground, it a moral ground as much as not understanding that you know it's a question of not having just a fair election, but people seeing that it's a fair okay. election, yes. and I think that's the part which you the are not only fair, you are seen to be fair. In or, fact, as somebody has said, a very famous security expert has said, there are two purposes of counting in an election: to find out who has won, and the other is to convince the loser that is really lost. Okay. And I would say, I have a third purpose here, to convince the electorate that their mandate has been really justly expressed. Would you like to add to what, what Prabir has said? No, I think he's expressed it completely right. correctly. However, the one thing which uh, the election commission has not really spelled out, okay, is, and also in this court judgment, you don't understand. Uh, what do you mean by tampering? You know, so for example, uh, nowadays we hear about these electronic voting machines in trucks. Yeah, yeah. You, you've got, got you, exactly, I'm glad you're mentioning this because there have been literally dozens of these episodes. These days, a lot of people have smartphones, they are actually shorted. Uh, these EVMs being packed in private vehicles. There have been candidates who've been, you know, protesting outside the strong, strong rooms. You have even uh, RTI application, right to information, information, which says that Bharat Electronic Limited and Electronic Corporation of India Limited have altogether supplied something in the region of 40 lakh EVMs, but you can account for only 20. And the election commission saying, no, there's no discrepancy. There are things which have been kept in reserve, etc., etc. At the end of the day, there seems to be a huge credibility issue. And I'll take half a minute more. We have even the former president of India, Pradam Mukherjee, saying he is concerned at reports of alleged tampering of voters' verdict and the safety and security of electronic voting machines which are in the custody of the Election Commission of India is the responsibility of the commission. And there can be no room for speculation that challenge the very basis of our democracy, etc., etc., etc. And he goes on to say that it is his considered opinion that it is the workmen who decide how the institutional tools perform. And the onus of ensuring institutional integrity lies with the Election Commission of India. So at the end of the day, it's a credibility issue. Yes. Yes. So, you know, so when, when suppose one of these machines which are outside now has been tampered with, okay, somebody has just gone and voted for a particular party and now it finds itself inside, okay, then, but there is a, there is a VVPAD trails which are there. So then clearly there will there will be a mismatch between the two numbers, right? So the, the, the point which I was trying to make is that neither the election commission, unfortunately neither, uh, and neither the, the, the opposition parties act spelled out what is tampering. You know, so that the Supreme Court 
to take uh, to, to to you know the election commission saying that our electronic machines are are infallible completely true they are infallible let's suppose but what prevents me to take another electronic machine and replacing it that that is a fear today that exactly. a lot of people are exp expressing you know there was this huge debate about whether evms can be hacked and there were all kinds of demonstrations done inside the delhi assembly uh, the a particular person who happens to be an advisor to mr chandrababu naidu the chief minister of andhra pradesh he uh, election commission said no we can't have him there he's stolen a machine etc etc apology i would like to interrupt you on this yeah. issue i think there are two separate issues because they were saying that the evm could be hacked remotely and that i think is very very unlikely nothing is impossible in the world but it seems to be very very unlikely. you have to change the hardware okay. you have to right. essentially change the hardware without that you cannot remotely hack the machine you yeah, 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 right. the, the other part i will say there is a responsibility of the election commission of course as pranab mukherjee has said primary responsibility of the election commission i think it's good that we are raising all these issues because the subsidiary responsibility also belongs in this particular case to the opposition parties there is a procedure laid down and that procedure involves the opposition parties they must also exercise their due vigilance and that due vigilance means also knowledge of the procedures and that i think is an important issue that we now need to educate all the opposition parties that they have a role to play in protecting the leg the evms from tampering and i think and and, and what what rahul was saying and maybe we can conclude our discussion at this point it's not a issue now of hacking tampering manipulation new style booth capturing where where you sort of buy everybody or intimidate everybody and start pressing buttons it's a question of the allegation being made you're actually going to swap Yes. EVMs, yeah. which are supposed to be in the strong room, they are supposed to be always. They are supposed to be till the from the time the voting ends till the time the votes are counted. It's supposed to be twenty four hours being protected under by the by, by the police authorities, by the the the, the paramilitary authorities, etc. But the questions are today being raised as to, I mean, I mean, the doubts are being raised across by political parties, of course, and by. sections of civil society about the integrity of the the entire process yes right right and and well a detailed study actually would involve if you want to have a real detailed study which the election commission i think should uh, have is that in a particular uh, locality let's say how have the uh, the votes changed over the last few elections because the changes would be minimal and you can therefore actually what do you mean by votes changing you know so for example <coughs> you know uh, if there are three parties you know one would get 10% the other gets you know 40% the other get 60% let's suppose or 50% to make it 100% okay now uh, then in the next election it will be changes because you know most of us are, are quite uh, rigid about who, which party we want to vote to vote for and the changes are not as sharp normally one could contest your claim but anyway move on <laughs> but if if in one particular booth or one particular constituency the the swing is enormous just in one particular uh, thing then i think it should it should raise an alarm and we should see whether i mean this is for a long term study of the election processes we should see whether uh, no for example if there are, if there are let's say uh, 100 electronic evm machines okay and you you look at the one which party a let's say got the maximum in which electronic voting machine and which, which party a got the minimum okay and you see that okay if there are only the 100 voting machines if, if there are only 5 of these or let's say 20 of these with the party which won has got a lot of votes okay and so in the, the remaining 80 the, 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 the practically unusual nothing swing. unusual changes <coughs> those need to be double checked double verified Is exactly all right okay so but per elect per evm okay. unfortunately i don't know whether the electronic where the election commission of india actually keeps it per e e v m the booths change a and also the numbers no per per election the booth you know you know, you have an e v m numbered for a particular I, 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 i think that that But information is that, supposed to be there with exactly, the ec exactly now actually some changes even then takes place in terms of shifting of the people from a to b and even the geographical location of the booths can change but roughly yes if we see sharp 
changes in some and not others, there would be questions and Indeed. therefore checking those would make sense. Okay. But I would like to really conclude on a different note. I'll say, you know, it's not that the election commission suddenly is coming under question mark only because of the EVMs and VVPATs. The elections commissions, unfortunately, credibility in this election has been relatively low. Account of a variety of variety factors, of including one yep. member dissenting yes. and complaining that his dissension was we not being recorded. Also, the announcement of assembly elections, if you remember, two yes. years ago. So, no okay. questions so from a long we time. We have already raised the, not we, but people have already raised questions regarding the, shall we say, neutrality of this election commission particularly the way they have treated, as you said, with various complaints that have with come, particularly the particularly manner, against the speed, etc. All of these. So it is with that lower credibility that these quest this kind of, uh, shall we say, what you said, videos, pictures, and all of this, then create the uncertainty that the electorate has and the Bee parties. Before I conclude, I'd like both of you to very briefly summarize what, according to you, are the most important changes that we need to make in the rules, in the procedures, that what the election commission needs to do to improve its credibility and therefore improve uh, the credibility of the entire democratic process in what is supposed to be the world's largest democracy. Rahul and then Prometheus. Well, I think first of all there should be a completely laid down procedure of what happens if a VVPAT count doesn't match the electronic count. Okay, that should be a completely laid down. What is going to be done after that? I think that's one of the, the, the most important uh, thing. And then uh, after that, you know, the, this entire, these questions of, you know, the 40, 20 lakh uh, missing EVMs. Allegedly missing. Allegedly missing. Uh, it, it could just, you know, as we know, it could just be that the <laughs> order was for 40 lakhs because they wanted to make money for 20 lakhs, you know, but that's also, those the are there. Public sector is unlikely. Okay. But, uh, no, you, you can say I've kept half as, uh, as, as a standby. Right. As as a standby. right. Yeah, so, so those have to be also protected. You know, I don't understand how an EVM, you know, EVM is like this indelible ink. It's only made by one company. Two. In, two. This oh, case, two. in this case, yeah. two, right. Both public sector. Both public sector. And it's an impossible to get, you know, for me to make one in my backyard. So, so these, EV, these EVMs... Are you suggesting right? it's easier to make a fake currency note or something? Pro yes, I think so. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, Prabhi, let's have the last word. Well, I think it's very clear that there are still very much greys in what the election commission has decided. It doesn't lay to rest the... Uh, the, shall we say, the doubts that people have. So one part Rahul is saying is absolutely right, that they should be laid down procedure. But I think the second part of it, if any party contests the verdict of the EVMs, then they have the right to ask the election commission to match. And that right cannot be taken away saying it's the discretion of the election commission. In this case, I think between a certain gap, certainly, there's no question that they should be matched to the VVPATs. But I think beyond that, for the credibility of the elections, if the losing candidates, candidate or candidates, ask for a recount with the VVPAT matching of the EVMs, I think it should be a right for them to do so. so and this, this I think, is the basic okay. change that we, we will We'll have to wait and watch and see whether these changes are actually uh, made by the Election Commission of India. Thank you, Prabir. Thank you, Rahul. Time alone will tell whether Nirvajan Sadan is going to change, whether it's going to do all some of the suggestions that have been put forward by our experts here to improve the credibility of the election process in the world's largest democracy. Thank you for being with us. Keep watching NewsClick.